Hey everyone, Mavikix here, here to bring you a splashy stats guide for the Resto Shaman spreadsheet. Um, just going to be going over how to exactly use the spreadsheet and what all you can get out of it. Uh, first things first, you want to hit the create a copy button. That's going to bring up a copy of the spreadsheet. From here, you're going to want to pull up your Warcraft logs and go into any fight. And click on yourself and hit the summary tab. You'll be able to see your player stats. From here, you're going to fill out all your player stats. You're going to fill out what tier set you're using. You're also going to fill out how many wisdoms you have, how many, what kind of mana potion, if you're using one or not. Your race, flask, food, augment, or Vantus rune. The talents, as well as all your traits on your weapon. With that taken care of, you can now start looking at putting in logs. So you're going to hit the player logs. I cleared everything out here, so just delete basically everything that's in this region. Delete the minutes and seconds, the bloodlust time, mastery benefit, and tidal waves. And what you're going to want to do is just follow the instructions on your screen. So you're going to go, to go to the Warcraft logs, go to the healing, hit CSV. This is going to bring up a CSV file. I'm going to save it. You want to open this in Notepad. So I have it automatically open in Notepad. You might have to do it. You have to set it up your first time. What you're going to want to do is you want to delete the top line of Riptide, the top line of Healing Stream Totem, and the top line of Healing Tide Totem. From here, you're ready to paste all this data back into the spreadsheet. And you're going to click the Paste Formatting and Split Text to Columns. Now that we have the entire log set up, we're going to go back into Warcraft Logs, and we're going to pull some information. So Cloudburst Casts, so we need to go to the Casts, Cloudburst Totem, we have 5. So going back to the spreadsheet, 5. We also need the Fight Length, so that's 2 minutes 47 seconds in this case. Need Bloodlust Uptime, so we're going to go to Buffs, and find our Bloodlust Uptime, 23.85 in this case. And then we're going to need to open up WoW Analyzer. So you're going to get the report code, which is up here. It's after the slash, after reports, up until the pound fight. You're going to paste that in, and you're going to click on the fight. You're going to find yourself, and a whole bunch of data is going to pop up here. Mastery benefits what we're looking for here, 22.10%. So we're going to go back to the spreadsheet, type in 22.1%. Tidal waves unused percent. Again, go back to Warcraft Analyzer, or WoW Analyzer, 77.27. Uh, Alright, from here, this is all the input that you need from a log. So you're now able to go to the results page. Or sorry, the user weights page. Um, if you really want to, you can go to the results page. And this will just tell you stuff about the one fight that you have in. What we're going to want to do is if you want to compare multiple logs against each other, you're going to want to copy this top row here and paste it into log one. So control shift V will paste just the values. If you use control V, you're going to paste this form, this uh, formula. And if you paste the formula, it's going to change every single time you type in a new log. You're going to want to do the same thing for down here. And this bottom table deals with your relics. So one item level, and then all the different kinds of traits, and then all the different kinds of um, crucible traits. So you can go back to player logs at this point. You can rinse and repeat for all the other fights. So I'm just going to quickly do that. CSV, save, open it. Get rid of Riptide. Get rid of Healing Tide Totem and Healing Stream Totem, just the top entries of these. Copy and paste. And split text. I don't need that anymore. 229. Bloodlust uptime on this is going to be a little bit higher. 26.77. Fifteen point four six master benefit. Oops. 
So it always is it an 8.59. Then we need casts of Outburst Totem, which is four. <clears throat> so now that we have a second log entered in, if we go to user weights, these user weights are now different. So we're going to copy them, paste, copy these as well, paste. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a average value. Once you put in enough logs, you're going to get an average value for all the log data that you entered. So let's say you have nine different kills on Goroth and you want to figure out in average Goroth log, what weights you should have because you tested out multiple different gears of sets. You could enter nine Goroth logs and get a good Goroth set of stat weights. Or you could enter your best logs from each fight, since there's 10 slots here. There's only nine bosses and two Mesogeris. You can just put in nine logs, one for each boss, your best logs, and you can just say, yep, give me stat weights. And what you'll end up with is you'll end up with a bunch of averaged values for the stats in general you're going to see crit and haste be a little bit higher verse following up then intellect then mastery that's just how the numbers work out in the end um, from there you can also look at results and this will tell you exactly what you want to look for here um, in terms of you know it, it'll tell you you should gem whatever stat is highlighted in red this is broken for some reason, but haste should be the only one that's, gem that's uh, in red here. So in this case, you would want to gem haste if you can afford the mana. Um, obviously, if I were to put in another log, if I were to put in a KJ log, you would see crit gain a lot more value since I would oom myself uh, as longer fights go on. Um, you're going to see things like neck enchants, HPS, so Ancient Priest just performing better than Mark of the Claw for myself. You're going to see top five trinkets that you're going to want to get. So a C star at 930 is better than any other trinket currently, um, except for an Amantul Vision, which we don't have access to yet. You can see item effects. So Nod Thumb Ring, Arcway Set, Drape of Shame. You can see it's only 13k. You can see all the two piece and four piece bonuses for the upcoming tiers as well as previous tier. And you can see some Crucible weights. So Queen's Ascendant has a lot of value. Um, weapon item level it's better than three weapon item levels and then you're going to start seeing some crucible traits and then you're going to see flood waters and then some other crucible traits and it just works its way down and then you can see the level 15 uh talents torrent and undulation are both already done so you can take those as a given this should be around the hps you see out of them unleash life it's really hard to maximize Unleash Life, so that's why it's still experimental, and we're working on the overhealing aspect of that. You can then use gear comparison tools. So if you have multiple pieces of gear and you want to see which one performs the best, you can put it in here, and you can say, like, piece one, piece two, piece three, what the item effects are, and it'll give you values for each piece. You can also use relics. So if you had a relic that had title chains let's say secure in the light and floodwaters that gives you that value and then let's say this one had floodwaters refractor shot buffeting waves this one's the best out of the four and you can do this for other traits as well when you type in item level difference you want to reference the lowest item level one as a zero so let's say zero one two and one this path three or I guess it, this is, should be the third trait, not path, but um, is basically going to be the best because it has this extra item level, even though if it were to be only one item level, the second relic would be better. So you can just use that to reference which relic you should put in your weapon. Trinket data, this is where you're going to be able to adjust what exactly item levels of your trinkets. So I know in my case, I have a 955 Deceiver's Grand Design. So that inflates the value of Deceiver's Grand Design. I also know that my Deceiver's doesn't overheal at 0.5. It usually overheals at around 
and I know that my C star usually overheals at around 0.1. So C star has a lot of value uh, overall over my deceivers. Um, yeah, so you can change these overheal values depending on what all, like what your logs are saying. So you should go through your logs and you should look at what exactly what your overhealing values are. And you can average them out and report an accurate overheal value in these columns to gain the most knowledge about which trinket is going to be best for you. Trinket chart, this is just going to show you row values, same thing as the trinket data here, just it's going to organize it in a way that is easy to see. And that should be everything. Again, if you just put in enough logs, this will spit out the most accurate data possible. The more logs you have, the better. Um, so if you can fill out 9 or 10 logs, that's what you're going to want to do. Um, yeah, that's basically how the spreadsheet works. If you would like to join us on the AG Discord, there's a link on this front page. Uh, there you'll be able to find all sorts of other people in the Rest of Shaman community. Uh, we're more than happy to have you guys around. And if you need any help, you can ask there. Thanks everyone for watching this guide. Hope you found it useful. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you guys in the AG chat rooms.